Hey everyone. In this video, I wanted to look at actually calling a REST API using PowerShell. REST is really a standardized API that's used very, very widely today in the industry. It's great for very loose coupled services. And when I'm leveraging PowerShell, I wanna be able to interact with that. Now I'm gonna demonstrate this also talking to Azure because there's many times we actually wanna interact with Azure through the RESTful API. Maybe there's not a PowerShell command lit or a CLI available yet, but this really does apply to anything. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new content. So we think about, we have APIs. An API is kind of that application programming interface where I wanna interact with something. And it's a standardized way to communicate to that service. Now, REST is a very popular interface that we want to work with. Now, I think about, hey, I have some kind of endpoint. Now, this could be something in the cloud. It could be something on premises. It really doesn't matter. But I have some service that wants to talk to it. And what we do is essentially we make a request. So we're going to create a request. Now our request goes to a certain endpoint on that kind of RESTful interface. And then we're going to have a number of different things. Now one of them is we're going to have an operation, a method in REST terms that we're using. For example, I might have a method of, for example, post. It could be put, it could be patch. And then I'll have a header. I might optionally have a body. So I'm gonna have different parts of that. I could have parameters as part of actually the URL I'm leveraging as part of that. But I have these various components. So we can say, hey, there could kind of be a header. Header's also very useful if I have to actually authenticate. I might have a bearer token, I'll pass that as part of the header. I might have a body. And then what we're going to get back is basically a response. And that response will have a certain payload, a certain content. Uh, very commonly, it could be JSON, it could be XML, that, that can vary. But we're going to get that response back. Now, many commands will actually use REST behind the scenes, but they're abstracted away. For example, in Azure, when I run a PowerShell command, it's actually calling REST. But that command that I'm using essentially abstracts that from me, but then it actually goes and perform a request and it understands the response. That's commonly what an SDK, a software development kit does. It abstracts away the actual API. And we can see that. So if I actually jump over super quickly for a second, so what I've got here is a kind of basic script. It's in my kind of random stuff repo. It's going to define my subscription. Let's run that. If I do a dash debug, you can see I'm kind of doing that here. That will actually give me a lot of information about running this command against Azure. And really the thing I care about here is if we scroll all the way up past all my kind of resource groups, notice you can see the payload so it's giving me this kind of JSON payload, but then you can see the headers. So I can see kind of useful information that's part of the headers of the body of that response that we actually got back. So it's giving me some good information just as part of that kind of header. And then I can also see if I keep kind of looking through this, I'll actually see the request we made to the API. So behind the scenes, it's actually using all the same things we could directly call. So here you can see how I'm using a HTTP method, kind of get over here. I can see the absolute URI I'm leveraging to actually make that query against. So it's doing all of the same things that, well, we can actually do ourselves. It gives me information, for example, on Azure, hey, number of reads left before I expire my kind of quota. I get 12,000. 
So it's using that RESTful interface behind the scenes. So we have that. But what about if we want to actually do this directly? Now there's actually two different commands we can leverage. We have this idea of invoke web request. So we have invoke web request. I pass it a URI, that can include the endpoint I'm trying to get to. And what I'm doing is I'm storing this in a variable just $R. This one I don't have to authenticate. I can just leverage it. So I'm calling this RESTful interface just for the Azure update feed. Now if we just look at what $R is, we can see we have this raw content. We can see there's headers as part of that. And then we do actually have, as part of this, the content. And it's passing back XML. So we can see here, we do have this content configured for us. And I could go and look at that. So I can absolutely dump out that content. So there's some work involved there, but I get a lot of information, but it's not doing much with that response. I have to go and look at it. I have to actually go and do various things. Alternatively, if I'm actually making that kind of restful call that's going to return a rich format, I can instead use invoke rest method. Now, the parameter is the same, dash URL, I'm passing it the same thing. But notice this time, I'm just passing that output to a format table. I'm not saying, hey, I want to look at the content or do anything else. I'm just calling it. Because what happens is invoke rest method will actually translate the response, i.e. if it's JSON, it's going to go and create a custom object for me that I can then just interact with like anything else in PowerShell. So that's really a, a nice way. So generally, if we're talking to a RESTful endpoint, I'm going to use invoke rest method. Now, typically, we do need to authenticate. Now, this is going to vary depending on what is the system you're talking to. There's not kind of a, a standard. But what is a standard is it's probably going to want a bearer token. It uses that token that it's going to use. It has an audience. So this RESTful endpoint is part of some service. So when I think about authentication, this is the audience, i.e. when I create a token, as part of that token, I have to actually specify who is it for. And you have to put in who is the audience. So if it's whatever that service, let's say it's the Azure Resource Manager, in my token, the audience has to be, let's say, Azure Resource Manager. And then I can pass this token, which has got a lot of other stuff as well, as part of the header. So that's what we're going to do next. Now, generating the token is going to vary greatly. But in Azure, which is what I'm going to kind of show here, it's actually super, super easy. So if we go and look, yes, I can use my existing context. And I've kind of got this fairly complicated set of commands here that, hey, creates this Azure RM profile provider that then goes through and dumps a bunch of things out and eventually finds a token. And I create a hash table, which I'm going to use as the header. So a hash table, remember, I'm just kind of doing this. And I can put in my various kind of key values, content type, application JSON, authorization is a bearer, and then my actual token. This absolutely works. This code will work. I can leverage that. But it's actually much easier. If I've already authenticated, I can literally just run the command get az access token. And by default, that's going to use the resource manager endpoint as the audience. So I can literally just say, hey, give me a token. It's going to default to resource manager. I then create that hash table using the token that is inside that object that gets returned. So now I've created the header. And what I can now do is I can just do that invoke web request. So I'm going to use the web request initially. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm dumping out resource groups. Now, a key part here is, so I'm passing the URI, which is kind of, hey, what I'm actually sending this to. And I have a certain kind of endpoint subscriptions, etc. I have a certain method. So the method I'm using here is get. And I'm telling it, hey, I'm going to pass headers 
and I'm passing it that hash table I created that says, hey, the type is JSON, and it has my bearer token in it. So I can execute that command, and then I've got my content, but if I just look at the content on its own, it's the JSON, but it's kind of ugly, so I can convert it from JSON to kind of a custom object and then back to JSON. And what that really does is pretty it up. So now, hey, there's the content, but I do have the full headers as well. So I can go and look at things like, well, how many Azure Resource Manager requests do I have left in my quota? Hey, I'm back at my 11999, because it's constantly getting kind of refreshed. The REST method is cleaner. My parameters are exactly the same. I'm just replacing web request with REST method. I'm storing this in R2. But notice now I just do R2.value. And what it's done, remember, is it's converted it to kind of this custom object. If I actually looked for a second, I did get method, and we execute that. Oh, that's not right. Oh, member, not method. Oops. There we go. We can see what it created for me is a custom object. So it automatically took the JSON and created this custom object that I can now just do things with. Now, word of warning. If I'm using PowerShell and I'm having this URI string, remember some characters are special. So the dollar character, for example, normally means, hey, it's going to be a variable. And I hit this problem when I was trying to dump out compute SKUs for a certain region, because it wanted you to have kind of this, hey, dollar filter equals location equals the region name. Well, it just kept getting ignored. Well, because dollar means, hey, a variable is going to follow. I have to escape it. So I just escape that out, and then it's going to work. So just be aware that if you put this as kind of a regular string, you might need to actually escape stuff. So now I'm going to look at all these SKUs, compute in just East US 2, and it works. Now note, I can request tokens for other audiences. So here, for example, I'm doing the get AZ access token, but at this time I'm saying, hey, I actually want it for a different audience. It's Microsoft Graph, graph.microsoft.com. So now I, I get a different token. I still create the auth head of the same. And now I could just say, hey, I want to get all users equals guest. Again, because I'm using this dollar filter, I have to escape the dollar. I'm kind of escaping that out. There's other methods you can use to escape. I'm just manually doing it in the string. So I'm just going to dump out all my guest users. And there's all my guest users. So I, I can kind of have those things there as well. Now that was all about method get. I can have a body as well. I can actually do a put, I can do a patch. Remember the difference here is a put is all about replacing the current object that's there kind of already. A patch just updates certain attributes of that existing object. So if I just want to change one thing, I would use patch instead of put. So if we go back over here, what I'm going to do now is, I've not got the complete content here. This is actually, if you're interested in the complete thing, this was about setting some metadata for an Azure VM. There's a user data attribute, and I've got the full kind of script in my random stuff repository over there. But what I would have had is I had this variable $UserDatabase64, and I need to pass that as the body to my RESTful call. So I use a here string. So a here string in PowerShell member is I kind of start it with just kind of the you know, at double quote. And then whatever I put within there, it doesn't check, it doesn't do anything with. So I don't have to escape a bunch of stuff. It will still evaluate the dollar kind of variables, but I don't have to worry about anything else. I don't have to escape things, etc. cetera. I can have this multi-line, just use it as is. So I'm creating a here string for the body, and here you can see, hey, I have a properties, and the user data attribute I'm setting to this variable. And then you just call the web request the same way. Again, I can even have variables as part of that URI. You can see here, 
I'm using kind of a dollar bracket to make sure it's very clear where the variable begin and ends. So then it's dollar resource ID. And this time though, my method is patch. And then I pass it that here string for the body. And then I still pass it the authentication header. So that's how I can kind of patch those things together to do more things actually with it. So that was it. Now I think it's super complicated, but people have actually been struggling, I think, with especially calling kind of the Azure APIs through PowerShell. What bits do I need? How do I do the things? How do I get the token the easiest way? But just generally, how do I use RESTful from PowerShell? So that was the goal. I hope that helped. Uh, until next time, take care.